All right, Flux, this is how to install it. In this video, we're going to be showing Forge and Comfy UI, which are two different UIs for AI image generation. We're going to be showing how to get Flux working with both of them inside of this video. So the first one we have here is Forge. We're starting with Forge since Forge is largely a simpler, easier to get up and running, but we will be addressing Forge and Comfy UI in the video. With Forge, you're going to want to go to the GitHub page at this link here. That'll take you to this page. You'll scroll down and you'll come here to these three links. Largely, the instructions at the side here recommended fastest previous version. This is what you should follow. The basic idea is if you have issues with one of the versions, like it's not working or you're having some other problem, you could simply go back and download the other version. After you download the file, you're going to get a zip file that contains the files. You'll extract the folder and you'll end up with this here when you enter the folder. Wherever you extract Forge 2, that's going to be the folder that stores the application. So you want to make sure you put that somewhere that you want it to be. After you open up the folder, you don't want to click on any of these things as yet. What you want to do is go to Web UI, Models, and then in this folder, you want to pay attention to three folders. That is your Stable Diffusion folder, your VAE folder, and your Text Encoder folder. These are important folders. We're going to go and download the Flux models, and we need to remember these folders to know where to place various files in order to get the model working. Okay, so this link here, this is the link to the official Flux page by Black Forest Lab. This is the biggest, highest quality model that you have access to. Before, with AI image generation, it was relatively simple. There was like one model that you would have access to. But now, there's a bunch of different model sizes with these new diffusion transformer models versus the old UNET models. Before, if you tried to quantize a UNET model, it would not have good results. There were some methods that you could utilize to try to get better results out of quantization for UNET models. But for the most part, it didn't work that well. Whereas with these diffusion transformer models like Flux, you actually have the ability to quantize the models and have them still be able to put out good results. You might be wondering, what is quantization? Quantization is if you take a model, you can picture a model as being a big bag of numbers. These numbers effectively represent the model. All of these tell the model what it's supposed to do. You can represent the numbers that tell you what the model is in a lot of different ways. Like for example, if I go to one part of the model and this particular weight or this particular bias is something like 1.56, you could represent 1.56 as well, full precision, and it'll be 1.56. That's what you could say it is. You could also instead say that it's 1.6, which is an averaging or a rounding down of the model number. Uh, the, when you do this across the entire weights of a model, you decrease the size of the model, which makes it where it can run or fit on more hardware than the typical fully sized model. And the hope would be that if you average down the weights of the model, that the quality or the performance of the model is not impacted negatively or too negatively by this process. In practice, when it came to UNET based models like Stable Diffusion, the actual model performance would drop significantly. Quantization wasn't very popular within Stable Diffusion spaces. But with these new generation models, with these diffusion transformers that we're seeing inside of they are responding much better to the idea of quantization, which is quite important considering Flux is significantly larger than those stable diffusion models as well. So you need the quantization in a lot of cases for the model to even work. What we're checking here is the largest version. This is the highest quality version of the model. And realistically, this is not necessarily what I would say is the recommended version of the model, but I'm going to be going through the other versions of the model and explaining why you would want to use one versus the other with the models when you run them on your GPU they take up space on the GPU's VRAM. So if you go and check your GPU, you'll see how much VRAM it has. I think the most popular VRAM amount is about eight gigabytes or so. That would be equivalent to a 3070. 1070, I think, has about eight gigabytes of VRAM. But if you have like a 3090 or a 4090, then you'd have about 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And the more VRAM you have, the bigger models that you can fit on your GPU. With Flux or the full version of Flux, it cannot fit on a 3070, but it can fit on a 3090 
slash 4090 since they have the same vram size of course it only just barely fits on those gpus as well because the model is so large you might be wondering what happens if the model can't fit on your gpu previously if the model couldn't fit on your gpu well it just didn't work that was it out of luck but now if the model doesn't fit on your gpu then instead it just gets stored on your your ram instead of getting stored on your vram it gets stored on your ram so the vram would be memory dedicated to your gpu if you want to increase your vram you have to buy a better gpu but if you want to increase your ram you just buy more ram you understand or you can download more if you want the cool thing about this is even if you don't have enough space now on your gpus you can still run these models i for example only have a 3070 but i have about 64 gigabytes of ram and i have the ability to still run the full version of flux dev even though i don't have the necessary space on my gpu you understand you might be wondering well what's the downside i just get a bunch of ram and then i'm off to the races right well not really when the model is too big to fit on your gpu it slows down when it has to run on your ram of course, in practice, the speed that Flux drops to is not some uncalculable thing. In the context of my system, with a 3070 and 64 gigs of RAM, it takes about 74 seconds to generate a 1024 by 1024 pixel image. So something like this takes about 74 seconds to be able to generate. This model, being as large as it is, I wouldn't say that this is the recommended version. I'll be talking about some other versions, don't worry. But this is the original largest model, so I just want to make sure I link and show people this. When you're downloading, you just have to click here to download the model and you want to go back to the folder that I told you to record the three folders in your model folder from before and the flux one dev model the 22 gigabyte one that goes into your stable diffusion folder so that goes into this folder right here then your ae dot safe tensors this model right here this model goes into your vae folder so that would be this folder right here is where you want to download your, your ae.safe tensors model then you're going to need to get access to your encoders so you want to go to this link here that will take you to this page then you'd be looking at your text encoders you have your clip l and your fp16 model and you also have your fp8 model so your fp16 that is the equivalent size to the flux dev model it's an fp16 the fp8 that is the rounded down version like the example that i showed you before that's a smaller version that takes up less ram the important thing to know is i believe that when it comes to your prompt adherence or how well the model listens to your prompt there is a difference in the performance if you go f16 versus f8 also it doesn't matter as much to get a smaller text encoder since the text encoders can run before your model runs so they don't have to store in your gpu at the same time so as long as you have enough space to, to store the model you have enough to store the text encoders so you might as well get the biggest text encoder you can download the clip l safe tensors model and the fp16 model you can download the fp8 one as well if you want you go back to to the model folder from earlier and you want to go here to your text encoder folder and all of those models get downloaded into your text encoder folder now you want to go to this link here this link is to the fp8 version of the flux model i would say that this is more the recommended version of the model it's about half the size of the original f16 model and it has the ability to fit on a wider range of GPUs. Like for one, it now fits on your 3090 or your 4090 comfortably, whereas before, the Flux dev model just barely fit onto your 3090. I've heard some people having to disconnect their GPU from their monitor in order to have enough VRAM available for Flux to even fit on their GPU. So it's a very tight fit to be able to get it onto your GPU. Whereas this gives a lot more room. Also, now this model can fit on 16 gigabyte VRAM GPUs. I think it could fit on 12 gigabyte VRAM GPUs just barely around there. So you have much more of an ability to use this model with other things. Not to mention, you can also combine Flux with like control nets and other things, which are, are starting to come out now. Anyway, this is the model that I'd more recommend for the average person to be able to download you would see in this folder you have the flux dev version and the flux schnell version might be wondering what that is schnell is simply just a different faster version of a flux dev model instead of taking like about 20 or so steps it takes about four steps to generate an image you might be wondering why not download this one instead it can generate images in four steps that are better than the, the flux dev model but on average the quality of the images relative to a 20 step fp8 or f16 model it's not as good definitely a downgrade so you download the flux dev model the fp8 version 
and this goes into your stable diffusion folder this folder from earlier okay we now have the flux dev nf4 model so you might be wondering what's the flux dev nf4 model what does that mean okay so we initially had the flux dev model which is at fp16 then we had the flux fp8 model which is at well fp8 well, now we have the NF4 model, which is even smaller than the Flux Dev, the FP8 version. But there's an important distinction here. Whereas in the context of the Flux FP8 model, it basically just takes the regular model, kind of scales it down to like a smaller size. With the Flux NF4 model, it's a bit different. It's not actually like a 4-bit model like you would assume that it is. It's not really that. I mean, it is that. But with Flux NF4, it's much more of a strategic shrinking down of the model. Some of the weights in the model are higher precision. You could imagine in a big image generation model, some parts of the model would probably benefit from having higher precision, and some parts could probably just be compressed down to like a lower space to be able to save VRAM and save space and all of these things. So with NF4, it's a much more intelligent compression of the model. Another aspect of the Flux NF4 model, it has some lower level connection. The central idea being that it allows the model to also be faster not just smaller. There's the NF4 and NF4 V2 model. So you might be wondering, which one of these should I download? Well, obviously the NF4 V2 model is probably what you want. However, there's a certain caveat. If you have a, a GPU like mine, an eight gigabyte, like 3070 GPU, one thing you'll realize with the original version, the NF4 model, this actually fits on my GPU just fine. And I, I can generate images relatively fast. This is actually twice as fast as the FB8 version of the model inside of Comfy UI. However, with the NF4 V2 model, it's just a bit bigger. And then all of a sudden it doesn't fit on your GPU and it slows down by a lot, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. If you have a GPU that's larger than eight gigabytes, then the NF4 V2 is probably for you. So as for the folder that these models go in, then you probably already predicted where they go, but they go the same place all of your other models were going. And that is the stable diffusion folder where all of the models that you've downloaded thus far should be. After you've done all of that, you wanna go back to the root of your folder, which should be here and it should look like this. You'll see your update and your run. You want to run update and then you want to run run. Wait for all your files to download and get situated. After everything downloads and everything is situated and everything gets set up, you sh it should automatically open up your browser to the, the Forge page. Assuming you did everything correctly, you should be able to select your model here in this checkpoint drop down, you should be able to select your model. You can see here that I have the NF4 version of the model selected. This is the fast version that's very small and works really well. Um, you should be able to have that selected. You that here. Oh, I forgot to mention something. I think I missed this. On, on, on Comfy UI, the NF4 V2 model is slower, but on Forge, it's not slower. Okay. I forgot to mention, I don't think I mentioned that appropriately. On Comfy UI, it's slower, but on this one, it's not slower. And that's because the memory management inside of Forge is much more efficient than the memory management inside of Comfy UI. I think there were some recent updates today that might have addressed some of those issues, but for right now, it's not like that. So you could see here, woman wearing a shirt that says subscribe. And then we have the image of the woman wearing the shirt that says subscribe. Important to note, if you want, if instead you wanted to run the dev model or the FP8 model, you want to come here to the VAE slash text coder, and you want to select the AE.safe tensors. That's your VAE. You want to select clip L, that is your text encoder, and you want to select T5 FP16 or T5 FP8. Those are your text encoders like that, and then you would generate. So this is if you're using the dev model, the FP8 or the FP16. Remember the FP16, that's the full size model. If you're using either one of those, you're going to want to do this here to be able to generate images. Now, come for UI. With Comfy UI, you're gonna wanna go to the GitHub page here, like this. Then you're gonna scroll down till you get to here, di direct link to download. You will download the file that is here. You will extract the file, much like you did for Forge, if that's something that you were paying attention to. And you will open up the folder and you will see something that looks similar to the Forge folder from earlier in the video. Now, what you'd wanna do now is download the files that I talked about in the context of the Forge video. The difference is though, you wanna go to Comfy UI models and there are some key differences with Comfy UI versus Forge as to where the files go. So when you're downloading the Flux dev, and the Flux FP8 models, you're gonna want to go and download these into your UNET folder. So this folder here that says UNET, you want your Flux Dev and your Flux FP8 model to go into this folder. As for your Flux NF4 model, you want that to go into your checkpoints folder right here. 
So one more time, Flux Dev, Flux FP8, that goes into your UNET folder. Flux NF4, that goes into your checkpoints folder. As for the AE.safe tensors, that still goes into your VAE folder right here. And as for your Clip L and your T5 uh, F16 or your T5 F8, both of those go into your Clip folder. So that would be this folder right here. Both of those files go into that folder. You then want to go back to the root folder. You want to go in here to update and click update comfy UI dot bat. So make sure to click this. You come out here and then click run NVIDIA GPU dot bat. When all of those processes are complete, it, you should load automatically into your comfy UI browser. It should look something like this. I mean, of course, I've deleted all the nodes from here, but you should open up your comfy UI browser and you should see something along these lines. Then what you want to do is go to this link here. At this link, it will contain some of the workflows that are necessary in order for you to run the model that you're going to use. You scroll down until you see this image, and then you want to drag this image into your Comfy UI workflow. I'm in Comfy UI, I have the image here, I drop it, and this should populate my screen with all of the nodes that are necessary. And if, assuming that you follow the instructions, you put your Flux Dev model in your UNET folder, your T5F16 into your Clip folder, your Clip L into your Clip folder, and your AE.safe tensors into your VAE folder, then you should be able to click Q prompt here and you're off to the races. If you want to be able to change the prompt, then obviously you would edit this node and change it to whatever it is that you want. And then you click Q prompt and you generate your image. Important to note here, if you want to use your NF4 model, it will not work like this. Okay, you have to make some changes. So first thing, you're gonna wanna go here to Manager. If you do not see this, is because you do not have Comfy UI Manager installed. You're gonna wanna look to Install Comfy UI Manager. There's tutorials for that. It's not overly difficult, but you're gonna have to install it here. Click on the Manager. Then you wanna go into the corner. You'll see Channel. You wanna click on this and go to Dev. After you swap to the Dev Channel, you go to Comfy UI Nodes Manager or Custom Nodes Manager, and then you want to type in NF4. You can see I already have this node installed, but you would go click the Install button. Now you come out here, add your NF4 node by double clicking and typing NF4. This is the, the node that you want. You want the Checkpoint Loader. Checkpoint Loader NF4. If you accurately put the NF4 model into the correct folder, you should be able to come here, type NF4. And then you'll see the NF4 model that you downloaded. Click there. And then all you have to do now is delete this, this, and this. Delete these models. Take the model connection, connect it to the sampler, connect it to the other like time shift uh, thing. Connect clip to clip, connect VAE to the decoder. And yeah, that's it. After you do that, you'll be able to now generate using the NF4 model. You click your Q prompt, everything's fine. If for whatever reason you see that as being too cumbersome, what you could do instead is download another node, which is anything everywhere. And then you would simply just come here, go anything everywhere. Take this and type in your NF4 node and you'd simply connect this to here, this to here and this to here again. Anything everywhere is a custom node. So you're going to have to come here to manager. Make sure you swap from the dev channel to the default channel. Go to the custom nodes manager like you did earlier and then type use everywhere. And you'll see the node come up here again. I already have it installed, obviously, but you install the node from here. Well, after you install nodes, you need to restart comfy UI, by the way, but it should prompt you to do that. And then you'd be able to use this node. And then automatic, you wouldn't have to drag from here to each of the individual nodes. It just will automatically connect to all of the nodes. Guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you're enjoying the, the Flux generations. I hope uh, that this was helpful to you. Uh, largely, the process of using AI image generation models has largely simplified. It's gotten simpler in some ways and more complicated in some ways. I've seen a lot of people completely confused as to what model to download, how to use it, what to do. And there's like so much more stuff. Before it was just like one model, one UI, one thing to install. And the installation process 
is what was difficult. Now the installation process is easy, but it's like a million different models. And then there's nodes, and then there's uh, all these other settings and all these other things. I didn't even get to every single little thing in this video. I want to make more videos talking about these ideas. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Catch you on the next video. And yeah.